the inaccurately described almost oval Bahrain Alta circuit used for the 2020 Sakhir Grand Prix is one of the most unusual circuit configurations ever seen in Formula 1 thanks to its ultra-short lap time. But it's far from the first strange circuit in World Championship history. The Alta circuit is the third different version of Bahrain F1 has raced on, with the unpopular endurance configuration used for the 2010 race, then quietly dropped. Here's our pick of the most unusual circuits used in Formula 1 history, some long forgotten, some very familiar. And there were plenty to choose from, so let us know what we got right and wrong in the comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe for more from the race. Las Vegas We became used to some unusual race names in the 2020 Formula 1 season, but nothing as extraordinary as the Caesars Palace Grand Prix that was held in Las Vegas in 1981 and 82. And where was the track built? In the parking lot of the famous Caesars Palace Hotel, of course. The configuration had the feel of a car park as well, shaped like a capital E and not popular with the drivers, doubly so given the heat of the Nevada desert. There was the added ignominy of much of Las Vegas being completely baffled at this unfamiliar racing series blasting around a car park in the city. Fortunately, it lasted only two years, but remains one of the most curious venues ever to host Grand Prix racing. Dallas Searing heat, a bumpy track surface that fell apart, branded a joke by several drivers, the one and only Dallas Grand Prix is not fondly remembered by Formula 1. One of a spate of American city tracks that cropped up in this era, following Las Vegas and preceding Detroit and Phoenix, it was at least relatively quick for a street circuit and even drew a rare mistake out of Alan Prost. Worst of all, it was clear that there were going to be big problems in the Grand Prix, with a Can-Am race the day before tearing up the track surface. Emergency resurfacing didn't help and plenty of drivers were caught out by the track as it broke up on race day, including Prost. F1 never returned to this most inappropriate of street circuits. Valencia With the teams working out of garages built in a fish market, a swing bridge that was asphalted shut, a backdrop of America's Cup team bases and an urban setting that was a strange hybrid of street circuit and permanent course, the Valencia street circuit was a modern oddity. F1 raced here five times from 2008 to 2012, with Michael Schumacher famously taking the only podium finish of his three-year comeback with Mercedes at the final race. The circuit was soon abandoned, although Fernando Alonso's charging victory from 11th on the grid in a mediocre Ferrari in the last race held there means this odd venue will at least be remembered for one great racing performance. Pescara any race where a driver could run out of fuel but rejoin the race having topped up at a trackside petrol station has to qualify as unusual. That's exactly what Cooper driver Jack Brabham did in the 1957 Pescara Grand Prix, the only time this 25.8 km road course held a World Championship race. Famous for hosting the high-profile Coppa Acerbo races, Pescara was a late replacement on the 1957 World Championship calendar after the Belgian and Dutch Grand Prix were cancelled due to high oil prices caused by the Suez Crisis. The longest circuit ever to host a World Championship race, this was a throwback to the pioneering days of road racing. 1994 Circuit Changes this is not one track, but a group of four that have something in common. In the wake of the death of Ayrton Senna, several circuits had to make changes for safety reasons. Some of these became permanent, notably the addition of a hairpin at Estoril, where Williams driver Damon Hill famously flipped after Eddie Irvine spun his Jordan into him during practice in 1994. But it's the temporary changes that are the most memorable, because they turn familiar circuits into unusual ones. In Spain, drivers were confronted with a tyre stack chicane on the run out of Campsa, while in Canada there was a curb chicane installed on the long back straight. The most memorable was the installation of a chicane in the mighty Eau Rouge, with drivers dropping down to second gear for the left-right flick before heading up the hill. Thankfully, this was only used once. Indianapolis we're not talking about the Indianapolis Roval, used from 2001 to 2007 here, although that is also unique in F1 history, but instead the mighty brickyard itself. 
Forget the dubious claim that the Bahrain Outer Circuit is an almost oval, because the World Championship did race at the greatest oval of them all, from 1950 to 1960. The Indianapolis 500 was included on the calendar to justify the World Championship tag, even though there was minimal crossover of cars and competitors. In fact, no driver who scored points in those 11 races ever scored a point in a conventional Grand Prix, although Alberto Ascari did contest the 1952 race on his way to the World Championship. But to the frustration of statisticians, those 11 races do count in the historical record, which is why names like Bill Vukovic, Roger Ward and Johnny Parsons are often listed as Grand Prix winners. Arvis Blasting up one side of a motorway and down the other is nobody's idea of a great circuit configuration, but that was exactly the type of track that hosted the 1959 German Grand Prix. The historic Arvis circuit, an acronym for the German Automobile Traffic and Training Road, hosted Grand Prix cars in the pre-war years when streamlined bodywork was often used, with the longest version of the track an astonishing 19 kilometres. The terrifyingly steep banking of the north turn was its trademark, and was still there when the track was used in a shortened configuration in 1959. Tony Brooks won the race for Van Wall after taking pole position at an average speed of 237 km per hour, but tragedy overshadowed the event as French legend Jean Berra was killed in a crash in the sports car race that preceded the Grand Prix. Arvis remained in use for international motorsport well into the 1990s, with the DTM and German Formula 3 racing there regularly, with a certain Michael Schumacher among those to win there. Nürburgring Nordschleife The Green Hell is the iconic road circuit, 22.8 kilometres of the most challenging road course in the world. It's scarcely credible that Grand Prix cars raced here until the last German Grand Prix on the Nordschleife in 1976, when Niki Lauda's accident proved it was no longer suitable for Formula 1 cars. Thankfully, it's still in use today for racing for other categories. And in 2007, Nick Heidfeld drove a BMW Sauber there in one of the most memorable F1 demos of recent times. But it did get us wondering, how fast would a modern F1 car be around the Nordschleife? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And for a guide, in 2018, the Porsche 919 Evo LMP1 car lapped the circuit in 5 minutes 19.55 seconds. Curiously, this great natural road course was entirely man-made, built as a proving ground and race circuit in the 1920s. Tree-lined, undulating and fearsomely fast, it was a work of design genius and some of the greatest feats in Grand Prix racing happened here. Juan Manuel Fangio's charge to win for Maserati in 1957 and Jackie Stewart's dominance in the wet in 1968 are ranked among the very greatest victories at a circuit where triumph too often flirted with tragedy. Monza Combination Circuit the version of Monza used for the Italian Grand Prix four times from 1955 to 1961 really does deserve the description almost oval. For this version of the legendary venue did use the fearsome Monza banking. It was a bizarre circuit configuration, with the main straight split into two lanes by a row of cones to make this possible. Drivers started on the main straight and headed off round the normal pre-chicane version of Monza, so through Curva Grande, round the Lesmos, through Ascari, and then the Parabolica. But then they drove up the right side of the main straight and turned into the steeply banked north curve, following the oval track all the way round and through the south curve before rejoining the main straight to complete the lap. Fast and dangerous, its final two appearances in 1960 and 61 were primarily motivated by a desire to help Ferrari win, and this version of the track was deemed too dangerous but the banking remains to this day, although the only time you'll see modern cars on it is for photo shoots. Monaco Familiarity can blind us to strangeness. Just because the Monaco Grand Prix has been on the Formula 1 calendar almost continuously since the World Championship started in 1950 doesn't make it any less weird as a circuit and an event. The idea of racing Grand Prix cars on this short, narrow circuit on the Côte d'Azur is an incongruous and absurd one. 
Were a promoter to propose such an event as a new addition to the calendar today, they would be laughed at. When Nelson Piquet likened Monaco to riding a bicycle around his apartments, he was not exaggerating. This improbable race on a narrow strip of asphalt, amid all the glitz and glamour of this opulent tax haven, is a unique throwback to a lost era. So what do you think of our choices? We will be keeping an eye on the comments below to hear your views, and if you enjoyed what you've just seen, don't forget to give us a thumbs up.